right, so thanks everyone for being with us here today. My name is Phil Bowers. I'm the Senior Marketing Manager here at Grantstream. Um, those of you that have joined us for webinars at any point in time in the past eight years, you've probably rec you might recognize my voice or, or my name. Um, I have been here with Grantstream for just about eight years now, uh, leading the marketing team. And in that time, honestly, one of the things um, that Grantstream is, or yeah, I guess one of the things that Grantstream has done that I'm the most excited about is what we're doing here with our Wi-Fi voice solutions. This is, I guess we'll call it kind of an emerging deployment option. Um, it is becoming a, increasingly becoming a great alternative to your traditional wired telephony networks, especially on the SIP side. Um, and we, you know, we have clients, resellers, end users across the world that are already implementing this. Um, one of the best things, and, and as we go through, I'll kind of highlight what makes Wi-Fi Voice such a great option um, and kind of the things that make it stand out um, in comparison to your traditional networks. But I mean, one of the things right off the bat is it really allows you to build um, truly wireless offices that utilize is in here for your telephony network, the same Wi-Fi equipment that you still have, um, the access points, the entire internet network that you still have now can be used to transmit your telephony network as well. Uh, so as we go, uh, go through basically, actually, let me just kind of skip ahead here. Um, this is the order in which we're, what we're going to cover here today. going to start out real quickly with uh, highlights and overviews and benefits of Wi-Fi voice. Then we'll touch on the Wi-Fi voice solutions that, that we offer here at Grandstream. I'll give you some deployment examples with some specific things that are going to be of importance in each one of those. I think it's five or six verticals that we picked here for kind of our deployment examples. We'll finish off by touch, talking about um, how to optimize your Wi-Fi network to prioritize voice um, using our GWN series. Three different features we offer to allow that, and then we'll finish up with a question and answer. Um, so just to point it out, uh, if, if any, as I mentioned, I am a marketing person. Um, the topic and what we're gonna cover here today is more along the marketing sales lines of building Wi-Fi solutions, kind of what makes them so great, why you should do it, what they give to your customers. Um, in terms of really in-depth um, technical guidelines or um, actually going through and showing you how to set these up and specific features to take advantage of, uh, that will be a separate webinar that we hold in the future. Today is kind of our, our intro to Wi-Fi voice. Um, so, without further ado, let's just get into it. Uh, you guys saw I had some intro to Grandstream slides, and I believe most of you, um, if you're here today, you're, um, and based on who we kind of made this webinar available for, if you're here today, you probably know us very well. Um, so, let's just jump right into it. So, let's start off by just kind of going over Wi-Fi voice um, from a super high level. Um, it's also known as Vo Wi-Fi. You may have seen that. Um, that's kind of a popular buzzword, um, kind of an alternative use of it. it it's really, a, you know, obviously it is, it's a pretty obvious technology. It's, it's nothing really new. It, it takes advantage, as I mentioned earlier, of the same Wi-Fi networks that most businesses already have. And essentially what you're doing here is you're just extending your SIP accounts or your SIP signals um, from your telephony or from your telephony network out to endpoints through Wi-Fi rather than through your traditional wired networks. These two can certainly work, uh, you know, wired and a wireless uh, network can certainly work simultaneously at the same time if you have certain areas where you want to have Wi-Fi access points, excuse me, Wi-Fi VoIP endpoints. Um, in addition to wired, obviously the two can, can really coexist at the same time. They're both, as it says there, they're both coming from the exact, actually it doesn't say there on this slide, it says on the next slide. Same exact SIP platform, signals, programs, um, services that you already have just being, again, extended through Wi-Fi. Uh, one of the best things about it is it eliminates a lot of wiring, which especially as a reseller and installer is really big for you. It saves you a lot of time. It also, as we'll cover on the next slide, cuts out um, what, often one of the most, um, we'll call it, problem 
causing areas within any network and that actually is just the the hard wires themselves um, and with Wi-Fi uh, wi voice one of the really kind of the biggest benefit that we're seeing people take advantage of before is the, tr the truly wireless offices that it allows you to build um, which certainly have a very eco-friendly element uh, involved with it as well, which we'll cover here on the next slide. Um, and, and traditionally, and we'll touch on this towards the end, there's, there's kind of always been the concern, and as I go out and talk to people about Wi-Fi voice, the concern over quality of the signal because of other traffic going on. Um, with our GWN series, and we'll cover this at the end of the webinar, you can prioritize voice traffic so that you know, if the network ever, basically your voice traffic is always going to be number one within the network um, in order to prioritize that. And as you'll see when we get to the end, you can prioritize the GWNs to kind of prioritize packets in a variety of ways. So that's just a real quick overview of Wi-Fi voice. Kind of some of the major advantages of Wi-Fi voice is it, what, number one, it utilizes immersive Wi-Fi networks, which is great for a variety of reasons. First of all, you're using nine out of 10 businesses in this day and age have a full Wi-Fi network in place right now. Um, and if, they're, if they don't, they're, they're putting it in. So it, it utilizes the existing infrastructure that most offices are already gonna have. The other great thing about Wi-Fi is that, especially in comparison to DECT, the range is, you know, it, it gives you much better range. With some of our access points, you're talking about up to 300 meters away, which is three, four football fields, or soccer fields, excuse me, off the top of my head, um, which really just allows you to be incredibly mobile, which, which you see there on the, the um, icon right below it, the unprecedented mobility. The ability to, I mean, obviously, we you're going to see we offer both hard desk phones and cordless Wi-Fi options, um, but gives you the ability and any employee the ability to roam anywhere and, and really just have a phone, have access to a phone on their belt clip, for example, or any phone within the office. Again, no wiring needed. Um, all within the range of a Wi-Fi access point. It's incredibly easy installation, obviously, because it cuts out the majority of the wiring. Obviously not all of the wiring, you're you know, still gonna need to set up PoE switches to connect your APs and whatnot. But it really cuts out the bulk of the wiring, leads to much faster installation, which also streamlines ongoing, ongoing management by eliminating all of the wiring, which can often be the cause of network problems uh, from your network. It also, because you're now doing a lot of your VoIP traffic through Wi-Fi, you kind of have one common network that you're able to manage all of your internet and phone traffic. Um, it's also, and believe it or not, it's very eco-friendly, and it really goes back to the, the whole open office, no uh, wireless office kind of idea. Cut back on waste, really cut back on infrastructure, uh, build super clean offices. It's actually, there are a lot of companies in the world, um, Deloitte, I've read a lot of articles about them, obviously one of the biggest consulting firms in the world, um, that is going in the wireless um, office direction. And one of the main reasons they cite is because of the eco-friendliness of it. All right, so that is just a kind of quick overview um, of Wi-Fi voice. Uh, just checking out the chat. I see a couple of people who are mentioning that they don't see the screen. Um, it looks like that's just a kind of a pinpointed issue for a couple of people. If you are having an issue, I might recommend switching your network traffic or your network connection. We always recommend a hardwire connection if you are having any internet issues. Um, so let's keep going. Now we're we'll give you a quick in overview of the Wi-Fi voice. So now let's touch on our Wi-Fi voice solutions. Um, so this is kind of a really good visual to show you the entire um, recommending, excuse me, the, our entire Wi-Fi voice solution, giving you an idea of really everything that you can do with the Wi-Fi voice solutions that we offer. Obviously, in, you know, in, in our case, we're going to tell you, you know, use our UCM C series IP PBX. You can frankly replace that, obviously, with a hosted platform and just integrate your GWN series APs with that platform. And then we have really kind of five different 
endpoint options. We have our GXV3200 series. That is our IP video phone series for Android. Um, there are currently two different or three different models, depending on how you look at it. I'll kind of cover that as we go. Uh, the WPA20, that is something that I, I believe a lot of you are probably here at today's webinar because you were at our webinar on Monday in which we gave a sneak peek at the WPA20. Um, that is our first ever cordless Wi-Fi phone. Frankly, it's kind of been uh, the thing that has initiated a lot of this Wi-Fi voice um, a lot of the Wi-Fi voice content that you're seeing from us, we're developing an entire line of cordless um, Wi-Fi phones to go along with the WPA20. I'll talk more about WPA20 in a second. 1760W, that is our wireless version of our GXP1760. Uh, frankly, a lot of people might actually not even be a might not even be aware that that, that product exists, that's for sure. Um, GAC2500, that is our Android-based um, conference phone, and then Grandstream Wave, which is our free soft phone app, which allows you to get SIP, uh, you know, basically make and receive SIP calls on any Android or Apple mobile device. Uh, so that's kind of a highlight of the whole infrastructure there. Um, you're integrating the GW, your access points, um, with the UCM series of IP PBXs so that the SIP accounts can be translated wirelessly out to these devices that way. Um, again, I know that a lot of you probably have more, more in-depth and more specific setup questions in terms of configurations and whatnot. Um, we're going to cover that kind of stuff in another webinar. Frankly, you know, obviously that's, that's obviously a very important topic. We're not, we're not skipping out on it. We're just today focusing more on kind of an introduction into Wi-Fi voice. Um, within the next couple of weeks, we are probably within the next month or so, you will see a more technical webinar on this topic for us, for those of you that might be interested in that. All right, so now let's just quickly go through the Wi-Fi voice solutions that we offer. Um, yeah, so let's start off with our WPA20. This is a product that is we have not released yet. Some of you may be confused because you saw us call it the WPA800 in the past. It is. It was called the WPA800. We now call it the WPA20. This is the first ever cordless Wi-Fi phone that we're coming out with. It will also be the first of at least a series of three different cordless Wi-Fi phone models that we're coming out with. The other two models are going to follow up in, in probably a couple of, later on um, this year or early next year. Um, so this specific model is kind of your do everything standard cordless Wi-Fi model. Um, it's going to give you dual band Wi-Fi. Um, HD voice, it has uh, noise shield technology built into it, which blocks out background noises, which is great for the busy, a lot of the busy environments this might be used in, stores, warehouses, busy offices, etc. Each device is going to give you support for up to two SIP accounts, has a built-in accelerometer, um, which is basically the same thing that you're going to have on, on any smartphone that's able to sense kind of when the device is being dropped or allows you to wave your hand over it to wake it up or to turn it upside down to uh, make it go to sleep, that kind of stuff. Built-in panic button and push to talk button right there on the left. You can see it on the left-hand side. Um, that panic button or the push to talk is going to be great um, for a lot of different reasons. And one of the things that I'll highlight later on is for various security purposes, especially when you link it with our GDS, uh, link this Wi-Fi voice series with our GDS uh, door access cameras. Um, seven and a half hour talk time. The device is actually, it is actually built on Android and you can actually create your own Android apps for this phone. However, obviously it is not a touchscreen phone. It has a limited size, um, which is why we don't overly promote Android 7.0, but that um, does support that. So this device should be out. Uh, we should be re releasing it in early September. Um, this is really, I think, the kind of the anchor, the center point of our cordless Wi-Fi 
uh, or of our Wi-Fi voice solution. Obviously, when you think of Wi-Fi, one of the best things about it is the portability and the flexibility and the mobility that it offers. The mobility is the word I was looking for. And that's why these types of Wi-Fi phones, frankly, are really going to be, in a lot of cases, the focus of a lot of Wi-Fi voice solutions. And we'll highlight kind of different ways to use all these devices as we go. Uh, transitioning over to our other um, to our other um, I and, excuse me Wi-Fi enabled IP phones. Let's start off with our GXV series, the Android IP video phones. I'm sure a lot of you know these very well, so I'll fly through these. Um, we actually released a new model. Um, newest addition to this series, I believe it was in June, our GXV 3370. Um, for those of you that know the 3240, the 32, excuse me, that those of you that know the 3275, the 3370, it basically adds a more powerful chip, which allows it to run Android 7.0, a newer version of Android, and to support up to 16 lines and seven-way conferencing. All of the other features of this device are exactly the same as the GXV3275, um, which is still available through uh, distribution, and we will obviously always support that device. Um, so the other Android IP IP video phone model that we have currently. You see the 3370 here gives you a seven inch touch screen. Um, oh, by the way, also runs on Android, which I, you know, I guess it kind of says it up there at the top, but between this device and our 3240, which you see here, which is basically, um, they're, you know, more or less the same model. This one's just gonna give you 4.3 inch touchscreen and hard keys, whereas the 3370 gives you a full seven inch touchscreen. I guess there are some differences now between them where the 3240 gives you six lines, 32, wow, excuse me, sorry, I'm stumbling over all these product names. 3370 is gonna give you up to 16 lines. Um, but basically both of these devices to kind of go back up to 10,000 feet are, in my opinion, some of the most unique devices, IP endpoints out there. And what makes them even better is, as you can see, they're Wi-Fi enabled. These are Android IP video phones. I like to say that both of these devices are three in one. They give you the full functionality of an IP phone, the functionality of a video conferencing solution because of the camera, um, the access to the Android apps that it offers you and the full functionality of an Android tablet or smartphone at the same time. Really powerful devices, great for high-end users. And oh yeah, they're Wi-Fi enabled. Um, our GXP 1760W, this is something that I, I do want to highlight because, um, I do want to highlight this, and I, and I see a question about the Broadsoft Portable Metaswitch. I will get to that in a second. Um, the GXP 1760W is a product that we've actually had out on the market, I believe, for a little bit less than a year now. It initially had some limited distribution and whatnot. Uh, should be more or less widely available at this point. This is, uh, we took our 1760 and we added Wi-Fi to it. This was initially kind of at the request of a large white label customer that we have down in South America. Um, the, the deployment worked out so well for them and they've deployed so many thousands of these devices that at the end of last year we decided to make it a mainstream product. Um, you should be able to get it through most distributors at the moment. Um, and again, it is a wireless a Wi-Fi version of our 1760W. It's a great standard desk phone for mid-range to more basic users, we'll say. Um, and yeah, 1760W, uh, 1760 with Wi-Fi built into it, six lines. Uh, the screen of the phone gives you the digital BLF keys, um, as, which is something pretty unique for our phones. For those of you that have been with us for a while, not all of our phones offer those digital BLF keys. Um, so to touch on the Broadsoft Port One MetaSwitch logos that you see on all of these slides, that is by no means the only major platforms that we are interoperable with. The reason why I, we usually highlight these three is because in our experience to our customer base and with the service providers that we work with, that our resellers and our distributors work with, um, the end users that uh, you as our resellers and installers work with, we find that traditionally these are the three most popular service providers or back-end service provider platforms that our ecosystem works with. By no means is it the only, or, or is, it, is it the only companies or platforms 
that we are compatible with. You can go over to the partner section of our website where you can see a whole list of them. As I mentioned, those are just kind of the, the three three most popular ones and pretty much all of our devices, uh, specifically everything you see here, are certified with all three of these platforms, especially on the IP phone side. So that was the 1760W, um, which actually I forgot to mention you saw the award logo. It actually was named the Internet Telephony Service Provider Association's um, Best VoIP device for 2018, which was huge for us, frankly. We beat out Cisco, Polycom, Snom, a couple other brands on some really impressive devices, um, which really shows you how um, looking, looking at it from the Internet or from the service provider side of things and from the industry side of things, people are really expecting this Wi-Fi voice thing to take off, which is one of the reasons why this award won that, or won, this device won that great award. Um, just checking on my schedule now. We're about 21 minutes in. I was hoping to keep this to about 30 minutes. Probably going to go a little bit longer than that. Um, probably got about, I'm going to try to get this wrapped up here in about the next 15 to 20 minutes. Um, so our GAC 2500, and I will completely admit uh, myself that I often forget this device actually supports Wi-Fi, and it does. It, it is one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, conference phone out there, uh, IP conference phone. It's based on Android. Uh, not only does it have built-in Wi-Fi, but it gives you built-in Bluetooth to two uh, dual gigabit ports. It has a built-in conference bridge, supports up to six lines, oh, and also runs Android and gives you access to all of that. Uh, the main thing, obviously, we're talking about here gives you access to Wi-Fi. Um, I've, many, some of you may have heard me talk about this in other webinars, but we've seen a lot of deployments of this device specifically in uh, open office type environment because it has Wi-Fi. It basically allows a team to go anywhere within an office, essentially plug this device in and connect to Wi-Fi from wherever they are and hold a conference or a meeting or a chat from literally anywhere within an office. It basically is a create a, you know, create a conference basically from wherever you are as long as you can plug the device in um, and connect it to Wi-Fi. So GAC 2500, great Wi-Fi enabled conference phone or for common areas, whatnot. Um, another thing that kind of, I, I think, maybe gets overlooked a little bit when we're talking about our own Wi-Fi solutions is our Grandstream Wave app. This is, those of you that know this app, I, I think can, can tell us, in a lot of cases, my understanding how great the app is. It is really one of the only free soft phone apps out there, um, and it actually gives you more features and options than most of the ones that you're going to pay for. It, it is available for both Android and iOS devices. It gives you six, six SIP accounts. So basically, it turns any mobile device into um, a fully functioning six line SIP phone. Um, I believe currently our Android app supports video. I, I think we were hoping or trying to add video support to the iOS app as well. Be honest, I'm not sure um, if we ever went ahead and added that, but again, allows you to basically turn any, any smartphone, any tablet, and so within a Wi-Fi voice environment, um, basically any Wi-Fi enabled smart device into a SIP phone, a tablet, a smartphone, um, whatnot. So, yep. Free soft phone app, check it out if you haven't already, available for iOS and Android. Allows you to turn any Wi-Fi device into a six-line SIP phone. Um, all right, so that kind of covers the endpoints, uh, the voice endpoints. Just real quickly, uh, going to go through, obviously, in order to build a Wi-Fi voice solution or any Wi-Fi solution, you need access points, and usually you need a router as well. Uh, so our GWN series, I'm sure many of you are familiar with them currently has three different access points and one router within the series. Um, our GWN 7600LR over there on the left, that is our weatherproof outdoor long range access point, gives you up to a 300 meter range, um, which we see this deployed as often indoors as outdoors, though it has the weatherproof because of that range that it offers. Then you move, up, move to our GWN 7610. This was the first model that we came out with. Um, 
and the 7600 to the right of it, a little bit smaller in terms of physical size. Those two are our primary indoor access points and kind of the way those two shake out is if you're, if you're most concerned about offering the fastest speeds possible to the clients that need, basically if you, so if you, I'm doing a really bad job explaining this. If speed is most important to you, if you're not concerned about supporting as many clients as possible and you're more interested in speed, you want the 7610. It supports up to 1.75 gigs per second. However, it only supports up to about 250 clients, which frankly is a lot. Um, whereas the 7600 gives you less, uh, supports less speed up to 1.27 gigs per second, but gives you support for a lot more clients. So if supporting a lot of clients is most important, you want the 7600. If supporting fast speeds is most important, 7610. If you're going outdoors or if you need something long range, um, the 7600 LR is what you want. Our GWN 7000, the router over there on the right, uh, kind of the, it's a you know fully functioning enterprise, multi-wing gigabit router. Uh, one of the main ways that I see our um, customers using it at the moment is to uh, create VPNs, so one of the great features that it offers. All of these devices also have built-in controllers, which allows any of these devices you see here on the screen, to set up and control um, other, basically entire Wi-Fi net, um, networks. You can use any of these access points or our router to basically be the master access point um, or the master on any network so that from that one centralized user interface, you can set up monitor other, set up other access points, build your network and all, monitor it all from one central location, um, which is just the web UI of any of these devices is that the controller functionality is built in. It's not, to, we don't, you don't have to purchase it separately. Our access points will going to support either 30 or 50 through that controller. The router is going to give you support for, I believe it's up to 300 access points through that controller. If you're looking for more of a cloud-based Wi-Fi management solution, or if you're looking for one to support more than the access points that I just list, listed um, in terms of quantity, check out GWN Cloud. This is truly one of the, the, in my opinion, one of the coolest things that we offer here at Grandstream. This is a free cloud controller for GWN series access points. Um, there is no cap. I believe at the moment at the number of devices, access points that you can use to manage this. So if you need to manage hundreds or thousands of access points, GWN Cloud is perfect for you. If you want a centralized cloud controller for it where you can set up, manage your access points, you know, if you're a reseller, GWN Cloud's great for you because you can, you know, do it centrally. Um, if, you know, business has multiple locations and they want to kind of set up and monitor, especially with VPNs, the whole network from one place, GWN Cloud is great. Um, it is available in addition to um, being accessible through the web, it is available as a, an app for iOS and Android. The great thing there, it allows you to set up our APs by literally just with that app, scanning the barcode on the back and then it'll automatically add it back to your GWN Cloud platform. Uh, gives you real-time AP and client monitoring, integrated stats, reports, alerts, uh, et cetera, et cetera. The bottom slide says currently available to use during beta. This product was officially released a couple of months ago. It is official. It is widely available. Go to gwn.cloud to sign up for GWN Cloud. Again, it is free. Centralized platform for management of, of Grandstream APs or for management of a lot of Grandstream APs. All right, um, let me see what I have coming up next. All right, so you obviously, as you see here, deployment scenarios is coming up next. So we got deployment scenarios, which should be pretty quick to go through, um, and then wrapping up with just kind of three um, recommended configurations and features that we offer with the GWN series to allow you to prioritize voice traffic. Um, so one of the things in addition to all of the specifically voice and traditional communication functionality that we've been talking about um, thus far with Wi-Fi voice solutions, another great thing which actually was turned on to, to be honest with you, by some of our resellers is the wireless facility access solution that 
you can build by combining all of these with our GDS series of door cameras. Um, so currently we have our GDS 3710. It's been on the market, I believe, for about two years at this point. It is a really a great product. It is a IP door camera. It's basically a fully functioning facility access system um, and security platform all in one. Um, one of the best thing, and, and before I move on, we'll, we will soon announce our GDS 3705, which is an audio only version of this device without a camera. Um, so one of the best things about these GDS devices is the integration that they offer with other Grandstream products. All of our phones are built natively to be able to open doors through the GDS. So basically the GDS makes a SIP call, which in this case would be, you know, you'd register all these devices as extensions on your UCM. The SIP signaling, uh, the calling, you know, would be going out um, through Wi-Fi to these Wi-Fi devices. And really the, the most powerful option there is with the cordless devices, specifically um, the WPA20, which you see in the picture, and actually Grandstream Wave, which gives you the ability to literally have a wireless facility access solution. Um, you can have, you know, all, when somebody shows up, it either senses motion or um, anyone trying to get in or anyone presses the doorbell. Calls can be sent, those SIP calls can be triggered to go to the extensions registered to these mobile Wi-Fi devices so that, for example, within a school, um, a principal, no matter where they are, has access to allow and restrict people into the building or a security guard um, for an office or, you know, the, the examples are endless there. Obviously, you can also integrate all the other Wi-Fi devices we have um, to be able to make and receive calls and open doors um, when integrated with the GDS through Wi-Fi, um, the 3240 and the 3370, because they're video devices and color screens, they're going to give you that video functionality. You'll actually see a streaming video and be able to have that two-way audio video intercom connection. 1760W will give you a uh, two-way voice intercom, allow you to press a button right on the screen to open the device. Um, same thing with the GAC 2500. Don't believe that supports video, but you'd ever be able to receive a SIP call and actually press a button on the screen to open the door. So that is something I wanted to point out. You'll see that the GDS is going to pop up in some of the deployment scenarios. Um, again, this is something I was turned on to by one of our um, resellers who was talking about it specifically for educational um, deployments. But really, again, by you know building this Wi-Fi voice network, adding a GDS, integrating it back with your, your PBX or your hosted platform gives you the ability to turn that uh, basically to build a Wi-Fi facility access and security solution. All right, so now let's go through some deployment examples. I think a lot of these, um, just based on the visuals, are going to be pretty self-explanatory, but I'll kind of go through and, and highlight all of them um, or highlight the major points. This isn't by any means all of the deployment examples. I saw somebody in the chat mention warehouse, which I actually have on this slide. Don't have a subsequent slide for it, like I believe I do for everything else that you see here on this slide. Um, so these are, at, so basically the, the potential uses of Wi-Fi voice are endless. These are just, in my opinion, kind of the, the areas where they make the most sense or we can give the best examples. Obviously, offices and enterprises build those truly wireless offices, cut back on infrastructure. Hospitality, it's great here, especially with the cordless phones because of the range that it offers. Any hotel obviously already has a Wi-Fi network built in, so you can easily integrate their entire telephony network to allow them to be mobile, cut back on wire, wired infrastructure. Uh, warehouses, obviously, again, because of the range and because of the mobility that Wi-Fi offers. Education as well. Um, you know, especially for newer deployments, a lot of schools, it's going to be tough to really go in and put in a whole new wired infrastructure when you can easily just put in a couple, put some APs up and build a whole voice network that way. Um, also, again, want to highlight the uh, wireless security um, functionality that I just talked about on the last slide for all of these, but specifically for education. Medical, again, because of the range and the mobility that Wi-Fi offers um, and the ability to cut back on the infrastructure. Um, residential, obviously, uh, pretty much everyone has a Wi-Fi network in place, so, you know, why 
why have to deal with a wired, you know, hooking up a wired phone within within your house, put a couple of cordless phones or even, you know, the 3370, for example, which I always thought would be a great kind of kitchen or um, info center phone for a home. Um, and then retail again with the mobility and uh, range offered by retail. So now let's just take a look at some more specific examples. Taking starting with small, medium sized businesses, obviously, like I mentioned earlier, it's the same SIP platforms or same SIP service that you have. Um, and that's then extended out to the access points within a small to medium sized business, kind of looking at all of the Wi Fi voice options that we have. The video phone's great for executives or power users or for a security team or receptionist in case you have cameras set up or that facility access or, excuse me, GDS is set up so that they can make and receive calls um, with video um, right from the front desk to uh, the entrances or any cameras. GXW 17, or the GXP 1760W, really great for staff. Obviously, all these devices are Wi-Fi, so you can move them anywhere and plug them in, and, and as long as they can connect to a network, which allows any of them to be portable. Um, the GDA, or the WPA20, great for managers, anyone that's mobile that basically always needs to be reachable. G, uh, the GAC2500 in conference rooms, and then for those that travel, or for basically general employees that you want to be able to reach after hours, that, that want to be able to make and receive calls when they're out of the office on their mobile devices, you've got drink grand stream wave. In terms of enterprises, again, as you as you kind of go through, you'll see that the, the the setups really aren't really changing that much. It's just kind of being scaled up. Um, in terms of enterprises, again, the same same backend platform that you already have, you're just integrating it with uh, sending it out through the access points on, you know, basically in this example, I'm showing you various floors. You see two floors, imagine up to 50 floors, for example, um, which can all be you know, managed centrally um, with either our router, if you're using that, or in this example, GW and Cloud's the best example for the Wi-Fi management platform. Um, and in terms of the uses of the Wi-Fi devices, really very much similar to what I mentioned to you earlier. The video phone's great for executives and power users or receptionists and security people. Anyone that would be able, would it, you know, be able to take advantage of the the true you know multimedia endpoint that the device has in addition to the video functionality it offers 1760w for staff um, is w20 wpa20 for anyone manager security personnel that needs to be reached anywhere the gac2500 in conference rooms grandstream wave for uh, those that work remotely or those are that are uh, often traveling or anyone again that wants to receive calls on the go out of the office and then the GDS 3710, which again, a lot of enterprises are going to have security teams. So putting this at all the entrances allows you to basically, obviously integrate it also with your wired telephony network, but now also have, for example, a, a wireless solution for to be notified and to let people into control facility access by pairing the GDS and some of our Wi-Fi devices, specifically the WPA20. Multi-site. Um, this is just creating a VPN connection between the two sites so that they can obviously share the same networks, um, the same network infrastructure and whatnot. Um, also, um, this is another great example of where GW on Cloud would come into play. It kind of gives you a centralized platform to manage um, devices in both networks. Um, the other great thing, if you were to integrate a facility access solution here by creating this VPN between two sites or multiple sites, it allows you to share that access control information and kind of um, keep a consistent security and facility access solution, which also has a Wi-Fi component to it amongst all of your various locations. I do see the questions coming in, uh, really getting pretty close to the end here, so I'm just going to hold the questions until the very end. Should be able to wrap up here in just about the next five minutes. Um, hotel, another great example of these devices, obviously the best thing, um, you know, Wi-Fi, like I said earlier, any hotel is going to have Wi-Fi. Um, you know, uh, staff specifically are all over the hotel. Cleaning staff, security staff, management needs to be reached at any time, which is why the WPA20 is specifically 
a great option here. Um, put the, you know, the G, our video phones are going to be great here for security team or at the front desk. Uh, where the 1760W is also going to be great for anybody, um, not only at the front desk, but in the back offices as well. The WPA 24 staff, the GAC 2500 and conference rooms are common areas throughout or the employee lounge, um, which is where actually I think I'll, I'll talk about this on when we get to education where the push to talk from the WPA 20 could be great. Um, Urgent staff that needs to be, you know, that might be, you know, security teams or maintenance that need to be reachable 24 seven, even when they're not working, give them grand stream wave. And then also, as I mentioned, the door access solution to create kind of a wireless option or Wi-Fi option for that to allow, for example, the security team or anyone to let, or the, you know, the, the administration to be able to let people into specific areas of the hotel, um, be notified someone get, wants to get in and let them in from anywhere. Retail stores and warehouses, the specific example here is a retail store. A warehouse is a pretty easy example. It's really going to focus on the wire, the cordless phones here, the WPA20. Um, but again, also any of those, those uh, desktop phones because their Wi-Fi allows you to put them anywhere. But warehouse staff needs to be reachable. They need to always be able to make calls, put a WPA20 on their belt, call it a day. Um, and obviously, in comparison to DECT, specifically the range and the mobility they're get, you're going to get with Wi-Fi. Um, it's going to be able to extend a lot further throughout the store, throughout the warehouse um, as well. Education, yep, all right. So this is uh, the last one of the deployment examples I have for you today. As I mentioned, there's you know a bunch we could go through. These are just kind of the ones that, that came to me first and that um, seem to be the most popular at the moment, education. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of schools, you know, I hate to say it, especially here in the United States, are often a little bit older. It's it's more difficult, uh, more time consuming to go in and to put entire wired networks down when you, especially when you can just easily add a, you know, wireless network that's going to enable you to build a voice solution or in this case, also a facility access solution um, all through Wi-Fi, connect all your devices wirelessly without having to go through and wire what are often very large and um, um, often um, a little older schools. Um, so some examples here, you're gonna put the 30, the video phones in a main office, the classrooms are gonna have um, GXP 1760Ws, they could actually also um, be a great fit for the video phones to be able to make and receive video calls so that the front desk or the principal can just kind of call and have a video feed and you know make sure everything's okay at any point in time. Um, the WPA20 and the GDS here are really big and I want to kind of give you the example that I was getting from that reseller I was mentioning we were talking about. Um, obviously, you know, security is huge anywhere. Facility access is huge anywhere, but it is especially critical within um, education, within schools, unfortunately, because of, you know, a lot of the different events, unfortunate events that have transpired over the last however many years. Um, where basically one of the most critical elements of security for any school is who is managing who can get in and who can get out. Um, and what we have here by combining the GDS with this Wi-Fi voice solution, specifically the WPA20, is that it allows the, you know, the principal, the security team, who are, um, you know, whoever, the administrators who are very, who are usually throughout the course of the day roaming all over the school to have full control control of the uh, facility access for any school to be able anytime you know obviously the you can customize the features and and how the structure works but for example um, anytime somebody buzzes in or if somebody shows up and the device senses motion you can automatically trigger a call to our WPA 20 that the principal or the security guard or the administrator has when they're walking around the building and they can then right there decide to let somebody in directly, to call somebody else, to have them let in. Um, this is also where, and, and you know, I'm using education as an example, but it can extend to really uh, beyond that. But 
Um, the push to talk feature that the WPA20 offers, the push to talk or the paging option that it offers, is, you know, this is a, a great example of it where, for example, um, you have uh, somebody wirelessly walking around a building with a WPA20, they see something that needs to be done, whatever it may be. Um, and what they could do is actually then send out a page from that device or uh, push to talk out to multiple devices to basically, hey, you know, there's a, there's a spill um, on the third floor. We need somebody to come up, have that broadcasted to all the, you know, the phones that the maintenance staff or within the teacher's lounge um, or the security lounge to be able to have somebody basically always have... Um, get that message out to as many people to have somebody quickly come deal with it. That was an example of that in a school. That can also really work in any situation that we just talked about um, with the push to talk or with the paging through Wi-Fi out to any of these devices. All right, last three slides that I got here for you, optimizing Wi-Fi for voice. And some of you may have actually seen some of the things I'm going to talk about here in a blog post I wrote a couple of weeks ago. Um, let me just grab a drink of water here real fast before we finish this up. All right. So in all of my travels throughout the last we'll say eight months as we've been working on developing and now we're close to releasing um, our WPA20. Um, in all of those, in all of my travels and kind of all of the conversations about that product, general Wi-Fi wi voice generally comes up. And, and um, traditionally, the viewpoint is that people are, are concerned about Wi-Fi voice for the quality on two specific issues, poor voice quality and the belief there that I've heard is that, and, and obviously it makes sense with a lot of different traffic going through Wi-Fi, um, that's a lot of different other things and a lot of different other data that the, you know, platform, that the voice is being mixed in with and there's concerns over the quality, whereas your traditional SIP wired networks is easy to prioritize or, you know, voice is the main traffic going through often. Um, the other concern is poor roaming, um, that people are concerned that when they move from one access point to the next that it is not going to be seamless, that there's going to be a, either a drop in signal or that they're going to have to manually connect. I'm here to tell you that we have built a couple, three different things into our GWN series of wireless access points that are specifically meant to quell these two concerns. And as I mentioned, I wrote a blog post about this in a couple of different places. Some of our partners published it as well. So you may have already seen these three things. So to deal with and kind of to help address the voice quality, to prioritize voice quality, and to um, basically create seamless roaming, we have come out with three different features within the GWN series of access points. The first one is with, this is, I mean, honestly, it's, you know, I'm sure many of you know QoS. You can use the QoS within the GWN series to prioritize voice packets and connections. Um, you see an example of it there. So that basically whenever there's multiple packets going through that the network, your access points will find those voice packets and it will prioritize that over everything else. Obviously for a lot of businesses, um, voice traffic is critical, especially for a customer service based or sales based businesses. You're gonna probably want to go in and prioritize that um, to prioritize those voice packets um, so that you know, essentially whenever there is multiple traffic, the voice traffic is always getting through. It's always going to get through with the highest quality because the access points going to prioritize those packets get through before anything else. So that's in terms of the quality. Now in terms of the roaming, um, Wi-Fi voice enterprise. This is a feature that is frankly not unique to Grandstream. This is kind of a um, this is, a, again, a, a um, general industry, it's not a general industry feature, but it's a feature used by, uh, created by the industry. Um, it's actually not deployed on too many different uh, access points, believe it or not. Um, so essentially the way that, what Wi-Fi Voice Enterprise does is, is it helps provide a, 
a Wi-Fi client, in this case, for example, um, any of our Wi-Fi voice endpoints that we talked about, a list of nearby access points and their info. So to kind of take a step back there, as I'm sure many of you know, traditionally roaming is a client decision. The, the Wi-Fi client itself, not the access point, is the one that's deciding to switch and which access point to switch to. Uh, this feature Wi-Fi Voice Enterprise, which we have built into our GWN series, allows them to play an active role in the roaming decision to basically, as I just mentioned, provide the client a list of nearby, nearby APs and their info, which allows the device to immediate, the client to immediately find the best AP and automatically connect to it. Also, because the client was sent that information about nearby APs, it will shorten, completely shorten the authentication period um, down to a matter of a couple of tenths of a second. Um, and specifically the technology that is utilized to create this um, or to communicate with the client is 802.11k, excuse me, 802.11k, 802.11r, and 802.11v. Again, in Within the next month, we'll have a webinar that will cut more into the technical configurations that go, th go into setting all of this up. All right, so the last slide that I have here for you today and the last thing that we're gonna talk about before we get into wrap up and get into the Q&A is PMK caching and OKC. Um, I guess this is frankly a pretty technical topic. Um, but so this is to further the seamless roaming from what I mentioned on, uh, on the previous slide with the uh, Wi-Fi Voice Enterprise. This is something that we've built into our GWN access points for when you're using 802.1x authentication, which most of the time you are. It's kind of two different features. Um, I believe both of these features do need to be enabled. You have pairwise master key which is what PMK stands for. So PMK caching, what that does is it eliminates the need for the, for the client to re-verify and exchange authentication information on roaming to a new access point on the same network. So obviously almost all the time you're gonna have all the APs within an office or within an area on the same network. When this feature is, ena is enabled, as I mentioned, it basically eliminates that need to re-verify and exchange authentication whenever the client switches to a new access point. It'll just seamlessly happen. Again, both of these have to be enabled. The, uh, the second kind of thing that follows off of PMK caching, opportunistic key caching, sends a copy of that information uh, of the PMK info from the client to all of the APs on the same network to again further increase the seamless roaming um, from access point to access point again by eliminating authentication so between the last two slides there are three different features that we have uh, put into our GWN series to basically create seamless roaming um, one of actually the best pieces of feedback the most consistent pieces of feedback we've gotten from our beta testers on the WP820 specifically is that when using it with our GWN series access points, there is literally no drop from roaming. It is a seamless handover from one access point to the next. And that is thanks to these three features that we've added, PMK caching, opportunistic key caching, the Wi-Fi voice enterprise, um, and then if you're looking for to prioritize that voice traffic for really critical voice deployments, use QoS to do that. All right, so I realized that I went longer than I said I would, which I guess for those of you that have joined us in the past, I kind of have a habit of doing that. Um, as I mentioned that when we started, this is the first time that, that we've ever done a webinar on this topic. Um, so obviously it took me a little bit longer to go through it than I thought. Um, some really good content, I, I think, um, it, you know, a lot of people when, when, when I'm out there talking about Wi-Fi voice kind of think it's just kind of a, a fluky thing, but there, it really is becoming an emerging, uh, emerge, it is emerging as a very popular and very, um, we'll say, uh, advantageous way to build um, communication networks to install new uh, voice networks within an office. 
Um, and for, the, for the, a lot of the traditional concerns with the quality and the roaming, as we mentioned, um, manufacturers, AP manufacturers like us have built in various technologies and we've optimized Wi-Fi access points to be able to really handle voice traffic, whereas previously that was, you know, five years ago, even probably three or four years ago, that's really not what they were meant, um, made to prioritize. All right, so without further ado, um, I will head on over and check out these questions. I know a bunch of them came on, came through during the webinar. Um, do a QA. and I'll just read the questions out loud. And if you do have anything that you, uh, any questions you haven't gotten over to them, submit them either through the chat or the q and I'll be honest, the Q&A is a little bit easier for me, but the chat's fine too. Um, for those of you that, that have no questions or that might not be interested in the answers to these questions, that's all the content we have for the webinar here today. Um, so if you are going to drop out now, I do appreciate you being with us here today. We will, this webinar was recorded. I will send a follow-up to everyone with the recording. All right, so let me begin to go through here. Just going through uh, the chat here, see if anything points out. Somebody, uh, there's a comment about a battery on the GAC 2500. It's funny you bring that up. I think everyone internally here has been pushing for that for a while. So we hope to be able to deliver that at some point, because you're right, that would make that a truly wireless conference phone. There's a question about can it work with other a uh, with other access points as well. Uh, there's that question can go a couple of different ways, so I'll answer it every way um, in relation to what we talked about here today. Our access or our Wi-Fi enabled endpoints, the the IP phones, are all going to work with any access point from any manufacturer on any Wi-Fi signal. Um, we obviously. You know, one of the best things about Grandstream is that we do make, um, we do provide a full portfolio of business communication solutions so that you can get it all from the same manufacturer. Um, and frankly, as many of you know, because of that, you're gonna really get some great price advantages on some of the products you purchase from us. Um, and also, as I mentioned, our, our GWN series APs um, have, you know, what we like to think are some really competitive features compared to other access points out there on the network. The built-in controllers, um, for example, um, and the three features, the three features I mentioned there at the end to prioritize traffic and to um, eliminate roaming concerns. Um, however, if you have an existing Wi-Fi network in place with other access points, our Wi-Fi endpoints will all work with any AP. Um, if the question was about Grandstream, or excuse me, about GWN Cloud, if that can work with other APs, that specifically will only work with Grandstream APs. Question about using the door entry without a PBX. I mean, yeah, I guess you can. Uh, the advantage of putting it on a PBX is that it allows it to interact with, to make SIP calls automatically, to be able to receive SIP calls. It kind of creates the, I guess, I guess you could, I guess you could have it probably set up to make direct IP calls. Yeah, I mean, you can certainly set it up without a PBX so that it just, you know, makes direct IP calls to one specific device or saves everything to a DVR. Um, I would see, I personally think you can get a lot more out of it by 
putting it with a PBX, but yeah, I guess you technically don't need one. I'm still here just going through the questions or the comments, uh, a lot of comments that came in. do appreciate you guys being super, um, really engaging with us here today, some really good stuff. So there's a question about... Um, Wi-Fi versus DEX, and I'm not gonna. So as as I touched on throughout the webinar, you'll see that the really the the advantage of Wi-Fi to DEX is that one, it's your you know existing infrastructure, existing access points most of the time, um, and two, it's just that the, a Wi-Fi signal is going to have longer range than DEX. Um, however, there are still a lot of areas where DECT is going to be preferred, usually, frankly, in, in smaller buildings or more cost-effective deployments. There is, um, we haven't set the price for our WPA20 yet, um, but if you just go out and look and compare the price of DECT phones out there to cordless Wi-Fi phones, you'll see that DECT phones are quite a bit cheaper. Um, so for the, the price-conscious deployment or for the smaller offices that don't need the, the range that you're going to get from Wi-Fi, DEC is still a great option. I mean, we, you know, we're, I, I certainly have a WPA20 on my desk, but I also have a DEC phone, and that's kind of the phone that I've gotten accustomed to using over the years, and frankly, the office we sit in, um, most of the place, I'm, most of the time, I'm not roaming too far away, and I'm within the range of, of the, the wireless DEC base station. So there's definitely uses for both, and there always will be. Our DEC phones aren't going anywhere. Um, yeah, it's just... Two different uses, I guess. One, one. if you need long range and you have a big area, then Wi-Fi is your best option. If you don't, then DECT is, is still a great option. And I see now that I'm reading it that a lot of people also help to address that question, so I do appreciate that. do appreciate you guys. One of the things that I, I will say that I like doing about these webinars, or that I like about these webinars, keep stumbling over my words this morning, apologize for that, um, is the way that some of you guys really interact with each other in the, in the chat is great. Um, it, it's one of the things that's been really cool for me, being with Grandstream now for about eight years, is seeing how much our community has grown over the years, our community of resellers, installers, partners, and not only that, but how much you guys really interact and help each other out. So I just want to say that from my end, I think that's awesome. The WPA20 in terms of availability is currently scheduled for early September. Um, it seems almost positive that we will be able to release it in early September. So check back um, probably the second or third week of September to be safe, and you should be able to get this phone widely available. All right, so beginning to wrap up the questions here. Um, early se question about early September, also in the Netherlands warehouse. I believe, yes. Uh, not 100% sure, um, but I'm almost positive that I saw an email the other day that uh, we have already started shipping these units out to some of our warehouses. Um, obviously not in full supply and not in mass quantities, but there should be some available in the Netherlands warehouse when the product launches for our partners over in Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. So I've seen a question a couple of times about approved or compatible AP models for the WPA20. Um, 
So it's an interesting question. I believe actually we do have a list somewhere, which we'll probably will publish when the product gets published um, or gets released of what we've tested it with. However, theoretically, you know, what, um, it should really work with pretty much any any Wi-Fi access point. Obviously, Wi-Fi is a pretty pretty standard technology. Um, just to, for everyone asking about the copy of the recording, yeah, we are. I am recording it, still going, so you'll even get the Q and A session. Um, I will post that on our YouTube page, and you'll probably get an email link to it by the end of the day. Is the GXP seventeen sixty W supported in UCM zero config? That's a good question. It should be. Um, if it's not, it will be very soon, um, but I believe that product should definitely already have a profile in there. Just, <laughs> so funny, I, I want to read this question just because we get it all the time. Does Grandstream plan on coming out with a PoE switch? That's a, that's a funny topic. It is actually something that many of us internally have been pushing for and bringing up and, and frankly I feel like on almost every webinar I have somebody ask and kind of suggest that we do. To be honest at the moment we don't plan to. Uh, the, the, the sheer reason sheer reason is just because it, it's you know yeah it would be something that I guess would extend our solution but um, you know there are a couple of manufacturers out there right now that that make such great products and that have really cornered that market, Netgear specifically. Um, so we actually always recommend Netgear um, PoE switches. Um, so I, long story short, we have no plans at the moment of coming out with PoE switch, although um, I do get that feedback all the time. And, and like Eric, you're right, what you just said in the chat, what would a PoE switch add that the market doesn't already provide? The real answer is that we just feel like there's nothing unique that we can do there that's not already being done that, that kind of gives us a little bit of a differentiator within that market. It's pretty standard products that have more or less been operating the same for years. So um, with, with one couple major players, so yeah. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't look for a PoE switch from us anytime, anytime soon. The Wi-Fi dongle, which I see in the chat now, is also really good feedback. That actually has also come up internally. Um, and that is something that we are pushing for. And I actually think it might be something that we're looking into. I know some of our competitors provide that, and we actually provided it years ago. We had a Wi-Fi dongle for some of our phones. Um, I believe I've actually heard that you can, in a lot of cases, um, use certain third-party Wi-Fi dongles. We actually, within the Q&A section of our website, if you go in and look through it, and I'm sorry, I can't pinpoint exactly where it is, I believe in there, there might be a list of um, Wi-Fi dongles that we have tested with some of our devices. All right, so that, honestly, I've pretty much gone through uh, most of the major questions, comments through the chat uh, that was unaddressed during the webinar. So from my side, that pretty much wraps up the content here today. Um, I do want to thank everybody for being with us here. Know that it is a very busy time of year. Um, busy in terms of being a popular vacation time uh, for many of you, especially here in the U.S., in Europe, and South America. Uh, so hope you're enjoying, um, hope you're enjoying uh, your time off if you have had any or have any coming up. Um, but once again, thanks everyone for being with us here today. Always appreciate when you take some time out of your busy schedule to learn a little bit more about Grandstream. Keep an eye out for a lot more on Wi-Fi voice from us. Um, if you want kind of a good summary of today's webinar, I wrote a, a blog post on our website a couple of weeks ago 
that more or less was kind of the structure for today's webinar. So if you um, kind of want some additional reading material, keep an eye on that. Keep an eye out for some more Wi-Fi Voice webinars. Keep an eye out for the WP820 official product launch, which should be in early September. Um, and keep an eye out for some more technical content, training information on Wi-Fi Voice solutions. So yeah. That's it. I want to thank everybody for being with us again here today. Hope to see you again soon, and take care. Have a good day.